So good evening everyone, um, especially um, who is following us and watching this lecture online. Uh, tonight we'll have a lecture um, presented by Mani. Um, the many rooms in my father's house. Um, so we hope that everyone can enjoy and learn a little bit more with Mani. Mani, please. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Boa noite a todos. Good evening. Um, thanks for coming once again to the Alan Alan Kardec Spiritus Group of New Zealand lecture. It's the first Wednesday of the month. We gather here to learn a little bit more. And the um, the topic, the subject that um, we decided to present this evening is the many rooms in my father's house. So once again, welcome not only people that are here physically, but also people that are watching virtually, and also those who are here in spirit. So welcome everybody. Um, this is a very interesting uh, topic. I love this topic because I love, I love the galaxy, I love um, the universe, you know, I like to spend time, maybe too, maybe too, too long watching YouTube channels and watching this and reading about it. Um, but it's a very important topic on to spiritism. It's so important that um, Alan Kardec asked the spirits on the spirits book uh, right at the beginning on chapter 3, but also on chapter 3 of the gospel according to spiritism. There's a whole chapter dedicated to the, there, there are, in my father's house, there are many rooms. Different, trans the different translations have different words. You might have heard in my houses, in my father's house, there are many dwellings. In my father's house, there are many mansions, but the idea is the same, that there are many rooms in my father's house. So, um, using a little bit of creativity and imagination, um, we can try to understand this passage by many different ways. Uh, what did Jesus wanted to say when he was talking about house and room? It actually mean like a house, as we understand. Oops, sorry guys. My mouth is playing up on the screen. Yeah. A house, as we understand, a place where we live, like a physical establishment, a physical place where we live, where we spend most of our times. Not these days, because a lot of time we spend also some time in our, in our uh, different establishments, like schools. Or could it be something different, like a hospital? or even a prison. Could these be represented as rooms? Or maybe are we talking something a little bit more extra physical, something that does not belong to this physical plane, like the different realities that we have and um, in the spiritual world, as we can see there's a picture of Uno Solar, about other communities that we have in the spiritual world as well, that we can see in the literature of Spiritism. Um, as you can see, there are different realities for the spirit when we disincarnate, when we die, or our body dies. As we study spiritism, we understand that there is a different reality that we can belong to, depending how we live in this life. It can be happy, as nosso lar, but it can also little be a little bit less happy, like the umbral, which in English people call the threshold, which is a place of less happy spirits that have had a less happy life here. Could we perhaps be talking about our inner house? In our house we have different rooms, we have different emotions, we have different sets of minds that we carry about ourselves, we have different emotions, we have different uh, segments of our psyche that represent in our personality in the way that we have. Could those be understood as rooms as well, in our mental house, maybe, maybe by watching Pixar, you can understand <laughs> inside out how we and how some of us, or most of us, work in a, in a deeper inner level. Could we maybe be talking about our planet Earth as one of the many rooms in the solar system? Could we expand even more and go towards the Milky Way, our galaxy? and beyond to the universe, the magnitude, the vastness of the universe. What are we talking about when we think about the many rooms in my, in my father's house? So we can extrapolate, we can, we can um, 
use these ideas so we can further understand. But we're going to find this passage in the Bible, in the New Testament. And at the beginning of this chapter 3, Allan Kardec he uses this for us to understand. And the passage is found in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. And so the passage goes like this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. And then there's the variation, many dwellings, many <laughs> mansions, moradas, and we say in Portuguese. Um, if that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. There's a lot to unpack there, isn't it? It's a very, uh, it's a very important message because just to try to understand what, why is he talking about hearts being troubled? Why would our hearts be troubled? What is he talking about? He's talking about his father, Joseph, the carpenter, going back to his father's house. Who is he talking about a different father? What are the houses? What are the rooms? What is what context he was Jesus talking about when he talks about that? So we have to go back to the Bible and try to bring back to more of a historical context in which events, in which circumstance did Jesus use those words? So we have to go back to this image. Anybody know what this image is? The Last Supper, Santa Cena, the Last Supper. This very brief yeah. moment in Jesus' life uh, is packed with information, instructions, and consolation for all of us, but mainly for the disciples, the 12 disciples that are there. This is uh, one of the most famous pictures in the world, the Last Supper, as depicted or painted by Leonardo da Vinci in the 1490s. So even before Brazil was discovered, that long New Zealand, a long time ago, this painting was already represented at the moment is in Milan, in the Convent of Santa Maria della, delle Grazie. Um, so during this um, this event, it is very famous because this happened. It's called the Last Supper because it was the last time that Jesus broke bread or shared the meal with his disciples. And many things happened during this encounter. The first one of them was that just after the, they, they had a meal, Jesus stand up and he grabs a towel and he starts to wash the disciples' feet. Anybody heard about that? Jesus, he starts to wash the disciples' feet. Peter, he goes, what are you doing? Asking Jesus, what are you doing? And Jesus said, what I'm doing now, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. By the way, I'm paraphrasing. I did not memorize all the biblical text because it's very context. Because this this um, chapter has 38 verses, and chapter 14 has 31 verses. So I'm just paraphrasing. So <laughs> if you want to go into details, you can go back to the Bible and read. Uh, because we're just trying to understand the context of of this part. Um, so Peter says, um, "You are not washing my feet." And then Jesus says to Peter, "If I do not wash your feet," You have no part with me. And then Peter tried to joke, said, Oh, so if you're washing my feet, wash my hands, wash my hair. And Jesus said, No, uh, people that already had a bath, they don't need to wash their body, just their feet. And what I am doing to you now, now you have to go and do to, to each other. From this moment that this teaching that he says, Love one another as I loved you, he came from the washing of the feet. Because he said, As I washed your feet, you go and wash each other's, wash one another's feet. So this was Jesus giving the example of love one another as I loved you. Is in this verse. So the Last Supper is has one of the most important teachings that Jesus and Jesus, as the great master that he was, he was not the kind of teacher that only spoke. He gave the example. He shows us how to do it. So that's why he. He told the disciples, what I'm doing to you now, you don't understand, but I will, you will understand later. And then he said, but not all of you are, are clean. And then the second thing that happened in the Last Supper that is very significantly important 
he predicts his betrayal. Because he said, not all of you are clean, because one of you will betray me. One of you will take me to the guards, and then I'll be crucified, or be judged because of that. And everybody was in shock. All the disciples, who? Who is going to betray you? Who? And then he, they, they tried to understand, and finally it was decided that it was already happened, because that, had, that passage also happened in Matthew 26, verse 17, that the one that betrayed Jesus was Judas Iscariot. Judas betrayed Jesus by giving him up to the, to the guards. And, and he said, and, oh, he also said, love one another as I love you, because people will recognize you by what you do. So he's saying, you also, people will recognize the true disciples of Jesus by what you do, by loving one another, by washing each other's feet. And then he said, because as I told to the, to the Jews, um, to where I'm going now, I'm leaving. He said, I'm leaving. To where I'm going now, you cannot follow. I'm leaving now, and you cannot follow me. And then um, Peter said, but Jesus, where are you going? How can I, how can we uh, follow you? I mean, I will, how can I not follow you? I will give my life to you. And then Jesus, are you sure you give your life to me? Because true, in truth, I'll tell you that the rooster will grow. Uh, you're going to deny me three times before morning, before the rooster crows next morning. So he was doubting. Peter said, no, I'll die for you. I lay, my, I lay down my life for you. And Jesus, are you sure what you're telling me now? Because I know. So Jesus also predicted that Peter was going to deny him three times. So already three things, important things that happened in the Last Supper. You know, we have dinner every night, right? But not every night. We have these kinds of revelations and these kind of exercises of faith in, um, in, our, in our daily lives. But also, this is uh, John chapter 13. And this passage is from the, the chapter 14. And then in chapter 14, he tells the, the, the disciples, do not, do not let your heart be troubled. Because everybody was, what's going to happen? Where are you going? What's, why are you leaving us? Why are you leaving us? Because even though the disciples were the closest to Jesus, they were still incredulous. They were still not believing. They were still doubtful. But Jesus said, no worries. No worries, mate. <laughs> do, not your, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, don't you? You've been following me all this time. So, you also believe in me. Uh, my father's, that's what he said, my father's house has many rooms. I'm leaving this place and I'm going there to prepare a place for you and I'll come back and I'll take you with me. And then, and then he also said, but this is comforting the disciples. He gave them some comfort because they were troubled. Their hearts were troubled. They would not believe that Jesus was leaving. Leaving, as he was explaining, leaving the physical world, but not the, uh, not leaving them uh, by by chance. Because as we know, God doesn't do anything by chance. There's always a plan in God in, in our life, in, in in God's life. So he also says um, that, and then another disciple um, asked Thomas, asked, but how can we? Thomas, all oh, he had to believe, had to see to believe, right? So to man, you have to believe, see it to believe it. Doesn't believe. So I said, how can we know the way to go if we don't know where we're going? Where you're going? And this is when Jesus says another very important message. When he says, "I am the way," because he says, "You know the way to the place where I'm going. Where are you going? Which is the way?" And he says, "I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life." Another very important lesson that Jesus left us also happens in the Last Supper. So this is what he was saying, that he was the way. Because nobody can go through the Father, go through God, not but through him. Not by leaving the example that he left, loving one another, by washing each other's feet. So it's all kind of connected to the same idea. So one little, one simple a meal that he had for the Last Supper, there's a lot of teachings for the disciples and by default, by, as a consequence, to all of us as well. So he comforts the disciples, he tells them that the way and he to the Father, and he also promises the, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. He also he, he says that, don't worry because my Father will send you another Advocate another comforter that will come and cons console you, which we know is the third revelation, which is the spiritism. 
which comes to clarify, because Jesus says, the Comforter will come and will remind you of the things that I'm telling you in a, in a, uh, in a different light, in a new light, which is what the Spiritism is giving us. A new way to understand what Jesus told us over 2,000 years ago when this supper happened. And we are still struggling to, to accept the nourishment. Because Jesus used to spend a lot of time giving food to his disciples. Not only the Last Supper, but also the multiplication of the bread, the multiplication of the fish. But Jesus did not only give us food for our body, but he also gave us food for our soul. So we can get ourselves better, get ourselves stronger to work in our own betterment. So Jesus then, after spiritism, Jesus is not, long, not only our savior, that just because he died on the cross, he's gonna save us. Jesus is the example that we must follow so we can be better. We're gonna, we're gonna find a way to the Father by following Jesus' steps. Not just believing in Jesus, but trying to be as Jesus, the best that we can. Of course, we're not going to be like Jesus because he's the most perfect spirit that has been on this planet, but we will be doing our best. That's our goal. That's our objective. So, is that understood? There's a lot of information. A lot of things happen. We see that this picture, oh, it's a beautiful picture, but we don't realize how much is there, how much that actually happened in this moment. It's a very, it's, it's not a, by coincidence that it's one of the most famous paintings in the whole history of, of civilization because it's packed with information for us. So if you, if you are interested, I'll probably I'm going to put on the, on the link on, the, on our uh, live on Facebook where you can go and, and read in the New Testament and also in the, the Gospel according to Spiritism. So if you look again at the um, at um, At the, the teaching we can understand a little bit better now so when he says do not let your hearts be troubled he's talking about the disciples don't worry that I'm not here physically do not worry I'm gone but I'll come back and as we know in Lucas prayer he said before that Jesus said actually that happened in Matthew chapter 18 uh, verse 20 if two or more people gather in my name I will be there so Jesus never left Whenever we are in, in, in the same, um, we are synchronized, we are same frequency, frequency with Jesus, He is with us. So He never left. He left physically, but He is in a different place. Where is this place? The spiritual world. A happier place. A happier world that we have to get. And the only way that we're going to get there is by following His steps. So that's what He says, that if that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And he came back because just after his crucifixion, three days later, for the, so the disciples could understand, he came back, he appeared the, in this way, showing to the disciples that there is life after death. And the future life is the basis of everything that Jesus taught us. So once we understand the context, it's a bit easier to understand, isn't it, what Jesus meant to say? So this goes for us as well. Do not let our hearts be troubled. We are going through troubled times because we live in a planet, as we're going to see, that are full of suffering, full of miscommunication, full of hatred, full of diseases, full of wars, full of violence. Sometimes we do get troubled, don't we? We are at home watching the news or watching, uh, watching the internet. We do get worried. What's happening in this world? We get troubled, but Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled, because I'm in the place, prepare this place for you. He also promises us the, the Comforter, which is the third revelation of Spiritism, which we're going to see very soon. So, um, in saying that, then we can go back to, to further understand that, we can see, Father, we can understand by Spiritism saying that, um, which is a which is God, the first um, fundamental, the first principle, the first tenet of Spiritism. There is a God. There is a God. And a God that since then has not been understood as a cosmic entity. Because up to then, God was something that was very much in the image of, 
of us. We always imagine God as being like a person or being a spirit or being something that is more close to us. But spiritism came to tell us that God is cosmic. God is is the as the, is the first uh, question that Lankar asked as his spirits. He doesn't ask who is God. He asks what is God, and then to which the spirits uh, reply, God is the is the primary cause of all things. And there's a why do we believe in God? Why is there an existence of God? So by a principle that you follow in your in your physics in your science, for every uh, consequence there is a there is a cause. The word, every a reaction, there is an action. So everything that was not created by man was created by God. And if you go keep going back to what created that, what happened then, why, why the planet Earth was here, why the sun was here, why the Milky Way was here, everything that happened, that cause, what caused the beginning of all things was God. And he has some attributes. The attributes that the that and in fact Alan Kardec has his spirits. Could we say that God is eternal, infinite, unchangeable, immaterial, uh, unique, all-powerful, all-omnipresent? He's everywhere. He sees everything. He's uh, supremely just and good. He's Allah Kardec asked that. So the spirit said, "Yeah, in your terms, in your language, in what you can understand, you can say that." So this is the the the, the attributes that we can give from what we can understand. Because there are things, and everything goes from science as well. There are things that we don't understand in science, and it goes up to one point. The same thing goes for the things that are extra physical. Uh, we, our intelligence is still very limited, and we are reaching more and more. We are in a technological era, an era of communication and sharing of knowledge, but we're still very far away from where we can be our potential. Because uh, uh, the spirits also tell us that we are part of the progress. Of a, evo a part of evolution, everything evolves. Going back to the second fundamental of spiritism, and by the way, these are just some of them. This God created everything. Yeah, everything that man did not create, men and women, there's not the sexes here, men and women created, was created by, by God, including us. God created the spirits that live in the, the spiritual world, and eventually they, they live on the physical world as well. And also, after we live in our in the physical world, we die, or as we call the spiritism, we disincarnate, and then we belong to the uh, the spiritual world, which in the spirit uh, codification is called eraticity. This just means that we are between reincarnations. Reincarnation um, is a tool that we have to um, achieve perfection. Because Jesus, coming back to that Last Supper, Jesus said that nobody will get to the Father if not through my teachings. Do you think we are able to follow Jesus' steps in just one life? It's a bit hard, isn't it? So that's why God in His supreme and infinite justice give us the uh, reincarnation. And with reincarnation, He also gives us the tool of... Um, free will, the freedom to choose which way we want to go and which way we can go. And together with that other law, the law of cause and effect, action, reaction, we are responsible for the actions we do as well. So we come to a uh, final one also, talking about the spirits, the communicability of the spirits, the mediumship, the ability to communicate with the spiritual world. So all of these are part of the, some of the fundamentals of spiritism. But to understand what we are trying to achieve tonight, which is the many houses, no, the many rooms in my father's house, <laughs> don't get confused, the many rooms in my father's house, um, I think we, we need to understand these concepts so we can better understand. When we talk about God, we're not talking about a, a, an old man with a long beard, we're talking about a cosmic being that is responsible for the creation, not only of us, this planet, all the life that is in here, but all the solar system, the Milky Way, the galaxies, and so on and so forth, and everything that we believe. So it's much bigger than that. Um, and then we come to the multitude of inhabited worlds. The question comes, are there life in other planets? Or are we the only little planet that God put intelligent beings 
So he created everything else so we can at night can look at the Southern Cross. <laughs> He's a Maori New Year, right? Matariki, looking at the stars. And I think it would be very selfish of us to believe that, isn't it? That the whole universe, the whole galaxies are there just for us to admire. So, after all that, we're going to dive into what we're actually here for. We study this. Um, so for the study purposes, uh, we can conceptualize the word rooms mentioned the gospel in at least three ways. There are many ways, like my brief introduction. There's many ways that we can understand this. Um, so we can understand it as the worlds that make up the universe, the different planets, where other uh, humanities, other populations carry out their evolutionary march, like we are, what we are doing on this planet. Um, also, another one that we can do is the different spiritual zones, superior or inferior, beyond the physical borders, where life pulsates with the same intensity of the human species. Absolutely. We have many countings, many uh, of, these, um, of these realities in the spiritual world through the literature of spiritism. There are many books that have been written by spirits explaining to us how is this life in the spiritual world. And of course, that depends on how we live here. Life is a progression, is a continuation of events, and it doesn't stop with that. And then we can see the various segments of the mind where thoughts and reactions, dramas and tragedies, yearnings or dreams, and realities of the spirit linger. So we have all of this, um, all of these different uh, ideas that we can understand. We're going to be talking mainly about the first two. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I cannot delve into the different segments of the mind. But what I think we can all relate to that, right? that we have in our in our minds a lot of fears, a lot of desires, drama, tragedies, happiness, joys. So this can be viewed as rooms as well inside our mental house. But um, in the chapter 3 of the Gospel according to Spiritism, um, the spirits come to tell us that even in a city, there are many different uh, realities. Not all citizens know what's going on in the whole city, right? So in the city you have different buildings, like I was showing in the introduction. We have houses, we have hospitals, we have schools, we have prisons. And all these different buildings have rooms inside them. And all the different realities that sometimes we know they're there, but we don't pay attention. They don't belong to our reality. For example, here we are in, for those who are in the internet, don't know, but we are in Parnell uh, Community Center, which is a center located in Oakland. We have many rooms here. We are here studying spiritism, but just down there, downstairs, people are learning how to dance. Not for all, but I think a different, <laughs> a different dance here. Um, we have different classes, Italian class here. So all these, in the same building, we have different rooms, right? We are studying spiritism, other people are dancing, other people are learning Italian, other people are doing uh, a different class. But we can go beyond that. We can, let's imagine we are now looking into a microscope. Let's start to open up and zoom out. We are in a block called Titoki. We have here this Jubilee building. Downstairs there's a library. It's another room that I didn't talk about. Just behind us here, there's a foundation of the blind and visually impaired. Behind them, there's a, the birth care center, maternity. People are being incarnated right now. People are being born right now, right there. But it's a different world to us. We're not thinking about them, but the different reality happening just in this block here. There are a few restaurants just down the corner as well. They are there having their meal. Maybe a little bit too late for having dinner in New Zealand, but anyway, some people are still there having a meal. So these are all happening at the same time, just in one block. Let's get further a bit more. We are in a place here in the neighborhood of Parnell. Parnell is located in the city of Auckland. Away? <laughs> Auckland. Auckland is located in New Zealand. Before New Zealand, in North, North Island. North Island is located in. In New Zealand, we have three, or many more, but three main islands. New Zealand is located in the Oceania or Australasia, depending where you are in the world, you call it a different way, which is one of the continents of the world of planet Earth. Exactly. So we are, in a way, already. How many rooms have we gone through? Many rooms. These can be the rooms in our father's house. And we're only talking about the planet. Let's take a break and have a look about the planet. I'm just going to zip through them because we've already gone through over time, as usual, I'm talking too much. Planet Earth, okay? Even though um, uh, we live here, it took us a long time to understand this planet. 
we at one stage we believed that if the planet was the earth was flat some people still believe that believe it or not you can see <laughs> online uh, it's kind of beyond me of people going around with their gps which is a global positional system which is tracks them by a, a satellite that is orbiting the earth and they're on their phone i don't believe on planet but anyway mm -hmm. everybody believes in what they want to believe mm -hmm. but the reality is that i was going to see through this back in 600 years before christ um Thales of uh, Miletus already suspected the earth is round because back then the earth was still flat okay then after that Pythagoras 500, 100 years later he states that the earth follows two movements rotation and translation he, he goes beyond and considers that there are more planets so only then 500 years before Christ that we understand that the, the cycles of the planet that the earth rotates so even though we we are we say that we are we are stopped we're we are still we're never still because we are in a planet that is constantly moving just now every second we're here we are going at 30 kilometers per second around the sun we're never we're never still we may think that we're still but we're not still the, the planet is going is orbiting around the sun so if we, we are still compared to this planet, but compared to the sun, we are moving. We're always in the, on the move, okay? We don't think about that in our day, do we? We don't stop to think about that, but we are always on the move. So then we have all these people that study Aristotle that he states that the earth is round based on the projection of the earth from the moon looking at the eclipse, how we can see the shadow of the earth in the moon, we can decide, we can see that the earth is round. Um, he also developed the theory of the geocentric model that the, the planet Earth is the center of the universe. Wow, we're so important, aren't we? We are in the center of the universe. <laughs> but then, as we study more, we know more, uh, Ptolemy also believes that, but he also believes that we're not only in the center of the universe, but there is a dome. Um, Ptolemy was actually quite important because he was the one that created the latitudes and, and, um, and meridians as well. So he put out the, the different types of measurements which later on became important for us to understand where we are uh, in the position of the globe. But only uh, uh, Nicolaus Copernicus, 1514, he formulates a comprehensive heliocentric. Then we, we're no longer the center of the universe, but the sun is the center of the universe. Okay? Little did we know that actually there is a much bigger universe than our solar system. He was not wrong believing that the sun is the center of the solar system, but not the universe. Moving along, because it's interesting, but it's not that important. If people are interested in this, I can forward the, the, P, the PDF, okay? Galileo Galilei, his achievement include the improvements of the telescope, which is a huge advancement. So we can actually not only theorize and study, but we can actually look through the telescope, we can actually see. Like St. Thomas or St. Thomas, we need to see to believe, right? So before we just study, after the telescope, it's, it's, it's um, it was possible to, to observe them as well. But even though he couldn't prove by the telescope, he was investigated and tried by the Roman Inquisition because it was a heresy to the church to say that the sun was the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. How dare you? We are the center of the universe and we in this planet that God created us. You know, so this, he was actually tried. He, he was nine years in home arrest. He, was, he wasn't burned, he wasn't killed in Inquisition, but he promised that he would never write about it again, and still he was, in, he was home arrest. He couldn't leave his house for nine years until his death. Okay, that was Galileo Galilei. Then we have Isaac Newton, that discovered gravity, you know, the, the famous story of the apple that fell, and uh, he was watching this and he discovered the gravity. Um, laying down mathematic model that allows astronomers to study, calculate all the previous theories. We also have Francois Arago, uh, he's, he studied optics, which helped in the de uh, development of um, understanding the sunlight coming from the sun to earth. We also have um, Edwin Powell Hubble. Have you guys heard of the Hubble telescope? I'm going to be showing some pictures of this telescope. It's amazing. He was an American uh, astronomer who profoundly changed understanding of the universe by in in inventing the electronic telescope. But this way we can understand, we finally can understand that we are in a galaxy called the Milky Way. And just be a little bit before him, we have Albert Einstein, the 
the theory of relativity, the speed of light, gravitational waves and vortex, which just recently has been proved and observed. There was a theory, but just recently has been observed, the gravitational waves, and proved from orbiting the Earth. And a lot of these theories helped to develop the GPS, which we all have in our pockets, called cell phone or, mm -hmm. or smartwatch. So Hubble was the one that, I'll bring this picture then, of this is a, is a picture called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It's actually 14 years old, this picture. And it has 800 exposures of different um, parts of the galaxy going as far as further as 13 billion years ago. As we know, uh, light travels at a certain speed, 300,000 uh, kilometers per second. So, this light that the telescope has been catching, like we're just looking at this here, it looks like stars, right? But every single light of this is one different galaxy. It's not just <laughs> one star. Okay? So it's, it's mind blowing, right? To think about that. And to think that we were the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it is. Um, so these pictures were taken a bit uh, in 11 days and compiled to this uh, uh, ultra deep field. That, there, was, uh, there are other more recent, but this gives a, a very good idea. I'm going to show you a little video so we can take a little journey into the universe. So um, this is, a, is, is fascinating because as I was giving you the example here, we went from this room to planet Earth, right? We started here, talk about the, the, the center, the community center, the, the block, the city, the, the country. But now we're going to go even further. So just watch this for a little bit. It includes different perspectives and the distance. So 100 meters, one kilometer, and we are zooming out of this planet. This is the west coast of the United States, San Francisco Bay. And off we go. One, 100,000 kilometers, then we start to see the moon. 10 million kilometers, start to see some Asteroids, there's our solar system, outer planets, planets. Now we are one trillion kilometers away and we're not even out to the Milky Way yet. Now it becomes light years. Capella just came by, Pleiades just came by. This is our, our galaxy. Now we have our neighbor galaxy. We're going to start to see now the closest galaxy to us is Andromeda. 100 million light years away. 1 billion light years away. 10 billion light years away. Now we're going to zoom in again. All the way back to the Earth. So this just gives us a little idea of how our planet is located in a cosmic concept, okay? So, after seeing this, it actually this is quite interesting video because it goes the opposite way. It goes microscopic, starts to zoom in into the eye and see the iris, the retina, and chromosomes, atoms, quarks. The, the, it's, it's, it's an amazing video. Um, so, what does the spirits tell us about all this? On the Spirit's book, on question 55, Alain Kardec asked, asked, this, asked the Spirits, are all the globes spinning through space inhabited? So we see, we saw a lot of, not only planets, a lot of galaxies there. The Spirits tell us that yes, and contrary to what they believe, Earthlings, us, human beings, and Earthlings being on planet Earth, are far from being first in intelligence, goodness, and perfection. 
So, so much for believing that we were the center of the universe, as we once did. Um, now, and understanding that, you know, and to believe that the presence of living beings is confined to only this planet, now that we understand a little bit more about the universe, would be very selfish, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. That we are the only ones that are intelligent, that live in this vast, this great universe. And just to remind us that now with the quantum physics, there are different theories that we are talk we always talked about universe, but there is now calculation of the possibilities of multiverses, parallel universes that are happening simultaneously whilst we are in this universe. <laughs> right? So think about that. There are many books, uh, there's one called Brian Green, Brian Green. There's another there's actually a Brazilian astrophysicist called uh, Marcelo Glazer as well about these theories, which it's, it's mind-blowing. Like probably you have to read it 10 times to try to understand it. But anyway, let's just focus on this planet for now and uh, to see that. And then question 56, the Kardec asked, do all the planets have the same physical qualities as yours? And he said, no, they do not resemble one another at all. So this is why, because they say, Contrary to what they believe, Earthlings are far from being the first intelligence, but all the globes spinning through space are inhabited. We've been to Mars, we didn't see any Martians there. Because it could be that, like the spirits tell us, their physical constitution do not resemble ours. Mm -hmm. Even in this world, there are different realities that happen that we cannot perceive with the five senses that we have. Mm -hmm. Another very strong proof of it is mediumship. Those who are mediums can see spiritual beings, though why not, cannot. So this happens in this planet. Things that are in a different dimension that we can perceive with our eyes, with our ears, with our uh, touch, with our uh, smell, with our five senses, we, for us, it doesn't exist. But just because we can't test those in our condition doesn't mean it doesn't exist there. Okay, we have many books in our spirit, uh, spirit, spiritualist literature that explain that. How is life in Jupiter? How is life in Mars? How is life in other planets that we're going to see very soon? So just uh, to recapitulate, to, to resume here, we have just in the Milky Way, there are about 400 billion stars, like the Sun. The Sun is a very small one compared to many others that are there. If you try to count them one by one, it would take over 3,000 years to count all the suns in the Milky Way. But the Milky Way is, in a, is in, a, in, a, in a different cluster of other galaxies as well. Andromeda has one trillion stars. Andromeda is the closest galaxy to ours. And they have one trillion stars. Okay? So, um, just thinking about that, all these planets that are, they have, um, they are inhabited, but they are not all the same. Because the universe is so old, some planets had more time to develop themselves intellectually, physically, and morally as well. So the spirits in this chapter, chapter 3 of Gospel according to Spiritism, give us a, a, a brief classification of the worlds. First one is the inferior world, it's called the primitive world, where evil dominates, intended for the first incarnation of, of the human soul. For example, the times of cavemen and cavewoman too. <laughs> but here on planet Earth, we've already been through this period when the world is very material, where evil predominates. We are very attached to material life. The second step, or second degree, is the world of trials and atonements, the tests and expiations, or provas and expiações, I would say in Portuguese, similar to Earth. So, this is the stage where we are at the moment, where ignorance and evil is still predominant, although intelligent and techno intelligent, oh, sorry, intellect and technology are well developed. This is where we're staying at the moment. There's still more evil than good, but the good is starting to flourish and we, have, we are a better understanding of where we belong in the big scale, the big cosmic scale. And we are seeing on planet Earth now a huge intele intellectual and physical development. In the last, I mean, most of us here are over 30, I believe. If you're not, I'm sorry, but we believe when we were younger, there were so many things that we used to watch a science fiction movie, a Star, a Star Wars, a Star Trek. We used to see people talking to each other on, on a little screen. Wow, that's the future. We are, we are in the future. This is reality now. 
We can call our family in Brazil or in the United States or wherever. We talk to them. For us, Star Trek, that was things that we used to see on TV. Now it's reality, okay? But we still, the morality, our morals are still lacking. We still have to develop that part. So after we develop our morals, we go into a new stage, which, which is called the regenerative world, where good and understanding predominate over ignorance. There are still some trials, there are still some atonements, but into a lesser degree in this types of, types of world. We are on the way there. In fact, as we know, we are in the planetary transition. We are between one step and the other. Hence, all this trouble and all this suffering that we are seeing at the moment. A lot of the spirits are having one last chance to evolve with planet Earth. Because the planet will evolve. Evolution won't stop. The question is, are we going to evolve with the planet? Or are we going to have to be left behind? One more step is the happy worlds, the worlds where ignorance is practically in existence. People live for the good of society and seek progress together. There is a still a very, uh, very quintessential, very uh, subtle material life, but there is still material life. But then there are the divine worlds, the zones of pure, pure spirits, purified spirits, where the good reigns completely. So there is a plan, there is a progress of evolution, planetary evolution, that we belong to. We have to remember what Jesus told us, do not let your heart be troubled. Things are not going how you want them to go, but they are going the way they have to go. It's like a little kid, oh, I, I want this, I want this, I want this. But you as a, as a father, as a mother, as a parent, you know what they need, know what they want. So we are the little kids. Speaking of, of uh, uh, spiritual progression, progress, we are still on the second stage. We are just coming to our teenage years, if you're thinking about our, our human life. So we are in the planet of trials and expiation. And this is us. Saint Augustine tells us that, he also did, he told this in the Gospel according to Spiritism, which was back in, uh, 1864, he, many times ago, many years ago, and he said the time is now being reached, so it's been reached since then, we are in this time, for one of these periodic transformations which will move the earth upwards from a world of atonement to that of regenerating planet where people will be happy because God's laws will reign. So he's been saying that for over 100 years, so a long time ago. That the planet has reached this point where we are moving. We are getting to the time where Jesus' teachings, which is basically the God's law, will be reigned on this planet. And it's very interesting to know that the spirit that tells us that is Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine is the same one that on the same book, book uh, Gospel According to Spiritism, on chapter uh, 12 of the Moral Laws, Moral Perfection, when Allan Kardec asked the spirits, what is the most efficient mo the method for guaranteeing self-improvement? Allan Kardec asked the spirits, which is the way that I can most efficiently improve myself? Because to, to follow the earth progression, we need to progress. Because there's nothing, there's nothing useful for us to be thinking, oh, the earth is getting better, the earth will get better, Jesus is coming back. We have to get better. Because each individual getting better the collective will get better and the play, we will move together as a society, as a country, as a civilization, as a main, as a mankind. So it is interesting that St. Augustine, for us to evolve ourselves, he tells us, oh, follow one, a, a, a wise man of your antiquity has told you, know yourself. So he's the same one that gives us a tool so we can get better. So he's telling us here that the time now has reached for this transformation that we have to go through. And to transform, we have to analyze ourselves. We have to analyze our conscience. And he actually he gives a little, a little exercise. Do what I used to do when I was alive. Because St. Augustine, he gave us the, the, the message through the mediumship. So he, said he, he dictated that as a, as a spirit. So he's saying that do that as I did when I was alive. Every night before my final prayer of the day, 
analyze yourself. What did I do today that I could do better? Have I hurt someone today? Have I acted in a way that other people got affected, got hurt? What can I do tomorrow to be better than today? This is self-knowledge that uh, a lot of us don't do these days. We're so busy and we're so entertained by our phones that we look at our phone and sometimes we fall asleep with our phone in our hands, right? <laughs> so this is the way that we can know, know ourselves, self-understand, self-knowledge, so we can go better because planets will evolve. Planets will evolve, and the qualification of the planet depends on the, the characteristic of its inhabitants. Just like the first reading that we did before, the world and evil, you're saying that I'm not asking you to take them from the world, but take the evil from them, as Jesus says to John. So we have to work in ourselves so this world can get better. We don't need to go away from this world. Because the characteristics of the many inhabited worlds vary greatly depending on the spiritual evolution of the individuals living on them. The spirits who live their physical lives in a particular world are not attached to it indefinitely. Just like when we live our, our lives here and we disincarnate and we go away to a different reality, our a spiritual reality, and depending on how we live our lives, how we apply Jesus' teachings in our lives, we have a different reality in the, in the spiritual world. So all planets have a physical world and also a spiritual world. We have like what we call in spiritism a psychosphere, a spiritual sphere that spirits that are, belong to this planet are around here. And uh, Emmanuel already told us in the book um, Reformador that 20 billion spirits, when he wrote that about in the 60s, so 20 billion spirits belong to the psychosphere. There's only uh, seven that are incarnated. So there are the spirits that are here. And all these spirits are evolving together. And, but we are not attached indefinitely to, to this planet. And so this planet of trials and, uh, and atonement, depending on how we live and how we see it, it can be seen as many different places. Like I showed at the beginning, as a house or as a suburb, a hospital, because people that are sick are coming to this world to get better, either through trials or through atonements, through expiations. For some people it's a prison, especially those who are in uh, expiations, uh, paying the consequences of a previous life. We, we understand that God, being infinite, just and good, does not punish us. What we can see, what we used to see as punishment, is only a consequence of our wrongdoings, our previous wrongdoings. So we can see that as a prison. Also, we can see it as an unhealthy place. But, as we understand the law of progress, it's not in the indefinitely like that. The planet is evolving, and so are we. But for the planet to evolve, we need to evolve individually as well. So we can leave this earth. We are able to leave this earth. We have some options. We can either leave this earth by merit, when we reach the maximum degree of advancement of the world, that the world has to offer, we pass on to a more elevated one, a higher one. It's like a student that has aced all his, all, all his marks at the end of the year, he can go straight to university instead of doing another, another year. Or we can stay in this earth and follow the earth progress, or we can have the demerit. When the spirit leaves to reincarnate in a more inferior world due to his persistence in evil. So if we don't evolve with the planet, we are no longer able to incarnate here because our, um, our vibrations are not the same of the planet. We are not being able to incarnate here. We have to go to a different place. And this immigration and migration of souls is constant. It happens as it has been shown to us in many different cases. For example, in the spiritist literature, we have heard of the exile from Capella. Has anybody heard or read exile from Capella? It was a great migration that happened in planet Earth over uh, 30,000 years ago um, that they came from uh, this um, constellation called Auriga or the Cochero, a charioteer that um, we have um, uh, Capella. 
Capella is one of the places there. And some spirits that could not follow the advancement of Capella, they had to leave Capella and came to planet Earth to help planet Earth to evolve. They came to a planet was, uh, what, which was in, in a level uh, that they could help here. So they came, as according to another book, um, by uh, Emmanuel as well, on the way to the light, a Caminho da Luz, Emmanuel explained to us that these civilizations, these um, spirits came here as the group of the Aryans, which were the Latin, the Greek, the Celts, uh, Germanic, Slavs, also civilization of the Egyptians, the people of Israel, and the different castes of India. They all incarnated on this planet to help the earth to evolve. Or from all that time. And it is said that many of them have already finished their trials here and they've gone back. Others are still here in this planet trying to trying to keep working. Um, we also here we also see in the book uh, Henuncia, Resignation, where we see the character of Alcyone. She had already uh, she was um, incarnated on Earth as, C as Celia on the book uh, 50 years later, and she had already surpassed the evolution of this planet, and she was uh, belonging already in a different planet. It was belonging Sirius, and she decided to resign her place there for love of for Pollux, and she came back to planet Earth to live here. And this is another book, this very beautiful book about this uh, Alcyone and Pollux came here to uh, she came here to help Pollux evolve as well. Another lesson of resignation and love. And most recently we have Planetary Transition by Divaldo Franco, Manuel Filomeno de Filomeno de Miranda, that explains that right now many spirits from a uh, uh, planet of uh, the constellation of Pleiades, uh, which in, in Maori is Matariki, in Japanese is Subaru, all this, this beautiful constellation, they are coming here to planet Earth to help this planet on this planetary transition. So there is, uh, when we talk about being brothers and sisters in God, it's not only brothers and sisters on this planet, we're talking about brothers and sisters, there is a universal cosmic family. And we are right now living this moment, this migration, this uh, all, all spirits coming here. So. We're almost there, guys. There's another 10 minutes to go, but I'll try to be brief because we have a little song in the end. So uh, I'm going to have to prepare your vocal cords because we're all going to sing. Um, so how can we leave our options to leave the Earth? But just to, just to rephrase, we don't have to leave Earth. Okay? It's a beautiful planet, isn't it? We have a beautiful sun that most of the time in New Zealand <laughs> come to us, especially in summer. But during winter, we have snow. We have a beautiful environment, not only in New Zealand, but throughout the world, we have a beautiful planet that God gave us. A beautiful school that we have here to learn and to go through experiences that we have in our family lives, in our uh, relatives' lives, in our experiences group, in our society. So, once again, in the God Genesis by Allan Kardec, uh, in chapter 11, the spirit, the spirit tells us that there are collective immigrations and immigration from one world to another. And new elements, new races of spirits are introduced to the population of the globe. They come to mingle with the existing race, constituting the new races of human beings. So this happens. We don't see it because we're all incarnated as human beings, but this transmigration is, is happening as well. And, um, and furthermore, in the Genesis, and this is chapter 11, but on chapter 17, which is the last chapter, which is for the new generation, the Spirit also comes to, to tell us that in order that man shall be happy upon the earth, it is necessary that it be people with good spirits, incarnate and disincarnate spirits, who desire only good. Let us remember that we have the migration, we have these spirits coming, but we also have the population of the psychosphere that is uh, incarnated and disincarnated. So we have to continue to be good, desiring to only do good. This time has arrived. Once again, we're talking about the codification here, over 100 years ago. Um, the time has arrived. A great immigration is being accomplished at this moment among those who inhabit it. Those who return evil for evil, and in whom in the desire to do right is not felt, being unworthy of the transforming state of the earth, will be banished from it. 
because they will bring only trouble and confusion and will be an obstacle to progress. They will be replaced by better spirits who will make justice, peace, and fraternity rule among them. So Jesus' invitation to us when he's inviting us to tell us, I'll go prepare a place for you. I'll send you the comforter so you can do as I did by washing the disciples' feet, by loving one another. We will get there. You will get there. You will get to my father's house. You will get to the place where I'm going. Because a lot of the times when we read there, we think, oh, Jesus is coming back to save us all. But he didn't say, I'm coming to save us. He said, I am the way. I'm not the, the carrier. I'm not going to carry through the way. You have to walk. You have to walk this way. And the truth and the life. So when he invites us, telling us that, do not be troubled. It's be that he's coming back. But he's coming back through us as our actions. We have to be brave enough to follow Jesus' actions and start to live this reality in the world by changing ourselves. By little by little, by knowing ourselves, by following our conscience, little by little changing ourselves. Because if we change ourselves, people around us will notice the change. If they, if they are up for it, if this is their time, and they will change, and people around them will change, and then collectively we start to slowly move. And this progress is happening. We can see some more progress in the, in the earth in the last 300 years or 200 years, let's say. So this is, this is happening here actually uh, at the moment. So, because in, in a new, in a other occasion, Jesus also tells us this is the time. I'm calling the workers of the last hour. This is the last hour. Not the last hour, meaning this is the last hour of the earth. The earth is not going to end. This is the last hour of transformation, which is probably going to be the next topic of my next lecture uh, in a couple of months. The workers of the last hour. What needs to be done to, to work in the last minute of transformation of this planet? Yeah, What we need to do. And I think the message is very clear that Jesus told us just at the very last supper, love one another as I loved you. Wash each other's feet. Help each other out. Because that's what is expected. This is the way that we are going to be from a planet of trials and atonement to a regeneration and so on, so on and so forth. But this change will only come through every single one of us. So I chose a little song. I think we're going to have time for a song, yeah? Five minutes? Mm. Um, it's a song by Ben Harper and Jack Johnson, and I put the lyrics there. It's a little bit high for the guys, with a deep voice, but um, I, uh, last, uh, I presented a, a lecture last time, and of course Facebook muted because I played the song, and they have the royalties. I'm sorry, Ben Harper, I didn't pay your royalty. <laughs> <laughs> so they muted. So I decided to bring the guitar and we can all play and sing together, right? More this way? Okay, maybe you can put the, the lyrics so people can see the lyrics. Let's yes, it's. I'm, I'm staying shy. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a brighter place with my own. 
chapter of the gospel according to spiritism it comes where it's named um, I did not come to destroy the law the spirits come to tell us that the first one is the Moses in the Old Testament which came to bring the Ten Commandments uh, don't ask me to name them now but you shall not kill you shall not uh, envy your neighbor you shall not yeah. all those um, and then the second revelation was Jesus we came to uh, exemplify uh, God, the justice and the love, by his maxim, the greatest maxim, um, love God with all our hearts, with all our soul, and all your body, and the second commandment being love um, your neighbor as yourself, and then the third revelation is this, the spiritist, uh, spiritism, which came to bring back Jesus' teachings, but with a different perspective, with a different, more um, current, more modern perspective, understanding the realities of a cosmic universe, not only believing that we are the center of the universe or the, the our solar system is the center of the universe, but more cosmic, more greater universe slash multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so you said that um, the dwellings are different places, right? Mm -hmm. That can be few interpretations on it um, but my point is um, although like you said beside us there is a, a hospital there is uh, people burning there is babies burning being born. Bur yeah being born burning. Burn yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> and then um, so we're not actually interacting with them but how can we care for them how can we uh, a way for us to care for the other dwellings as well First of all, it's the awareness to be aware, yeah? to stop being uh, self-centered, believing that we, our lives, it's, it's so important, and be aware of what's happening around us. First is uh, awareness and knowledge. And the second one is to follow uh, what Jesus told us, to, to, to do to others what we'd like to do to us, to love one another. So, you know, pretty much to help one another, because the charity in the way what we do to others is the only way 
like Jesus said, he's the way to, to do that. So we need to do that to one another. So awareness is the first, is the first thing, to be aware of. And we know, we don't have to go far, that we are in a planet that there's a lot of suffering. We are in the age of technology and information, so we know where, the, where there's suffering. So nobody is exempt from um, the responsibility of helping each other. Oh, I didn't know. Well, we know. We know where the things need to be done. And But this... Um, this blossoming of our conscience we will is individual because everybody is in a different state even though we are collected in a, in a planet of, of trials and atonements we all in different levels within this planet so for some people it's easy to see who, uh, how to help for others it's more difficult but is this um this way for help is available for for all those who want to help and to be aware so once again, thanks everybody and say goodbye to the uh, friends on Facebook Live. So see you guys next time.